Thank you for downloading this podcast from the British Theatre Guide. For more information about British Theatre Guide, please visit britishtheatreguide.info. Steve Orme here, the Midlands editor of the British Theatre Guide. The Royal Shakespeare Company is presenting a new production of As You Like It, with most of the actors aged 70 and above. Twelve of them are returning to the RSC, including Maureen Beattie, who plays Celia. We'll hear from her shortly. But first, here's Malcolm Sinclair talking about playing Orlando, and not for the first time. It's one of my favourite jobs, actually. It was about 1975, I think, up at the Crucible in Sheffield, and I'd been out of drama school for about two years. And Mel Smith, do you remember Mel Smith? Mel Smith, had dir- as, a, as a young director, directed stuff down the Bristol Old Vic where I started. And he went up and was an associate with Peter James, who ran The Crucible. And obviously they were looking for a young actor for the season. And so I did, before I did it, as you like, I'd done three other plays there. And then I was offered Orlando. And let me tell you, the um, in the cast was, so I was Orlando. An actress called Maureen O'Brien played Rosalind, who was... Big TV actor, actress then. Alan Rickman played Jake Riz, and he, like me, was two years out of drama school. Ruby Wax, remember Ruby? Ruby Wax played Audrey. She was two years out of drama school. Ian McNeese, who's now in um, Doc Martin, he was um, Touchstone. We had a very, very, very nice time. And I got some pictures of it, and I was looking at them, and I just I simply couldn't believe what I looked like. I had masses of black hair, because I can't got any hair now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think you'd play the role again? No, I never thought I'd... No, of course not. I mean, I know this... I mean, I've seen some of the... Oh, you know, um, I saw Ian McKellen's Hamlet recently, and I went to see... Which I thought was... Because it was after... In lockdown, it was sort of... Theatre coming back to life. I rather enjoyed that. Um, but, you know, I'd seen... Vanessa Redgrave and Jim, James Earl Jones doing Much Ado About Nothing at uh, the Old Vic years ago. You know, they had to cut the line, um, the world must be people, because obviously nothing was going to go on. <laughs> and I saw an old, a Remy and Juliet set in an old people's home, and, um, which I didn't think worked at all. So I was quite nervous about this. But there were a lot of people that I knew, and um, I thought, oh, yes. And he was a very nice director. And the thing is, it's set in a rehearsal room. So in a rehearsal room, anybody can do anything. We're not pretending where... I'm not pretending I'm 19, I'm pretending I'm... The man, I'm an old man playing a 19-year-old, which is, which is an honest thing to do, I think. So how did you get this job? Well, I, um, I, of course, I knew a lot of people involved, and particularly Geraldine James, who plays Rosalind, my, uh, <laughs> my love interest. I knew her, and I knew a couple of the other people. And uh, so I... And, of course, she was playing the lead, and it was quite important that she got the right person to be a love interest. So I said, oh, come on, I'll be very good for you. And, uh, and she went, all right. And she um, so suggested me, and I had a, a Zoom chat with Omar, who was the director, who is the director. And that sort of went well. And he was very sweet, actually, because he said, listen, he said, I've never directed Shakespeare before. I went, you know. He said, yes, he said. So I thought I'd hire a lot of old actors who knew how to do it. Because he said, if I get a lot of young actors... I won't be able to help because I don't know how to do it. I think I can direct it and stage it very well, which he has. But he said, I don't think um, I'll be able to do detailed Shakespearean direction. So, <laughs> so that's where we are. What's it like then, working in a company of mature actors? Well, of course, it, it's very good because you forget you do forget your age. It's only when I'm with my young friends that I go, oh, geez, I'm getting on a bit. But when, I, when I'm with everybody uh, in our company, we just all look the same. Um, but, you know, touch wood, we've all got a lot of energy, thank goodness. Uh, so, you know, we joke and lark around a bit. And, um, and the audiences get it and seem to enjoy it, which is a great relief. Uh, because you think, oh, golly, all these oldies tending to be young, it could be very tiresome. But because there's quite a few laughs in it, and, um, I would say this, but I think we do quite, we do it quite well. <laughs> Has the text changed much at all? Not much. It, it's been edited. So there's a couple of scenes in, in different directions. There's a, a few little cuts. I've, uh, and of course, some of, the, some of my colleagues were going, oh, yes, cut that bit. I don't want to do that bit. Cut that speech. But I was, I took the opposite view. No, I want it all in. So I, my Orlando has more of Orlando, I think, than more than any other part in the whole thing. Because I thought, no, I want, I want everything to 
say, I love saying it. It's marvellous stuff. It's marvellous play. Do you think there are enough opportunities for mature actors these days? Well, I remember, I remember years and years and years ago, I worked with a Benjamin Whitrow, Ben Whitrow, very distinguished actor. Um, he worked in, with Olivia in the um, old Vic at the National. And he said to me, so then I was probably in my early 40s, late 30s, said, now, you know, the problem is, when you get to your 70s, he said, you can no longer play characters who have jobs. And he said, if you can no longer play characters who have jobs, it gets a bit tricky, he said, because every good part is usually a kind of a doctor or a policeman or he's a lawyer or he's a detective or he's a spy, you know, they're all, or he's a cabinet minister. Or he, he said, you've, they've all got jobs. So you end up playing people's grandfathers and he said, you, you'll probably be dying in bed every episode or something. <laughs> so I, so I saw, sort of, I sort of, as I, as I got older, I got, oh, I see, that's what I've got to look forward to, right. But so far, touch wood, where, um, I haven't, I haven't been denied anything. And the thing is, these days people are living longer. And well, of course. Longer. And of course, when I, you know, I think of, I'm a, I mean, you know, I'm 73 now, and I'm a, compared to the 73 year olds when I was a kid, I mean, Except, I mean, sometimes I think, did the young look at me the way I looked at those 73 year olds? But I don't think so. I think, you know, we have better health, we've got better diets, we don't smoke so much, we don't drink so much. Touch wood, you know, we're, um, you know, we have got more energy, definitely. Well, this is a tough schedule, isn't it? Um, eight shows a week, yeah. five shows in three days. Are you coping five okay? Five shows in three days. Well, we've not done it quite yet. We've done five shows in three days last week and we just about got through that. I'm all right because Orlando's quite a funny part. When you start, you think, oh, this is one of the lead parts. And he is for the first about 40 minutes lead part. And then as he gets involved with Rosalind, she starts doing all the talking <laughs> and the part starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So by the end, I hardly say anything. So actually, it's not a gr- I, I'm all right. I have time to kind of regroup. I mean, for Geraldine and for James Hayes, who plays Touchstone, and they've got masses to say. I think it gets a bit much more ty- tiring for them. Do you think, though, that uh, these days, directors, casting directors, whatever, they look on people and, and think, oh, that person's of a certain age, they're not able to play a part? I think probably that is true, which is why, I, I mean, I've, even, I've just told you my age. I'm, I'm slightly coy sometimes about revealing my age, and, I want to keep saying, no, 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 my playing age is 45 and up, oh, which is not, of course. But, I, you know, just to sort of get the, um, so that people uh, don't dismiss you out of hand. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, it is a problem. And, it, and, of course, you can get ill. And, of course, then, I mean, I knew there was, I think it was the great Robert Hardy, who was in the, 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 the um, Harry Potter film, when he was over in his 80s, they could not insure him, even though he was perfectly fit to do the job. But they couldn't insure him, so he, he couldn't do it. It's, so that, that is the thing. I mean, with a the theatre, it's not so bad, but when you're, you know, a big, you know, expensive movie, you know. As you like it, um, it discusses issues like freedom, love and jealousy. So do you feel that you've gone through those experiences <laughs> yourself and you can relate to the character better? Well, I don't know about all of that, but it's, uh, I mean, it's primarily a play about love, about falling in love, sometimes for the first time, and appropriate people falling in love with each other, inappropriate people falling each other, falling in love with each other, wildly unsuitable people falling in love with each other. And that's the fun of it. And there's a fairy tale aspect to it, you know, we, there's lots of plot that gets sort of shoved quickly on so we can get onto the main business of the thing. And, and then at the end of the play, the whole sort of things are wrapped up in a very sort of fairy tale way so that it, it, the audience can go out and go, well, everything's been sorted out. But mainly it's about love. And at, at the very end, you know, the right people are with the right people. So you, you know, if, you, if it's, if it's done properly, you, the audience feel, yes, that's okay. That's okay. And the other marvelous thing about the thing, we've got a new epilogue. You know, there's quite a famous epilogue in the, in, in the Shakespeare wrote. And because of the special circumstances of, of the show, Robin Soames, who plays the good duke and the bad duke, has written in Shakespearean blank verse this marvellous epilogue that Geraldine as Rosalind speaks, you know, which, which 
refers to the fact that we're all ancient. <laughs> and uh, it's very... And, you, I, and the light, I, can see, I can watch the audience listening to this, and they go, and they're smiling and go, oh, yes, yes. You do know what you're up to. We know we've been on a... So it's, it's, a it's an old-fashioned conceit. That's what it is. It, the, you know, what happens if a bunch of oldies do this play? Does it reveal anything? And, of course, for me, I'm, I'm a better Orlando now than I was when I played it... I mean, I'm playing it, but I, I found much more in it. And I remember what it was like to fall in love. Anyway, listen, I fall in love all the time anyway. I remember years ago, Michael Parkinson asked Dame Edith Evans on one of his chat shows, and she was in her 80s, and have you been in love much, Dame Edith? And she went, I fall in love every day. And he went, I beg your pardon. And he said, oh, yes, every time I go on the bus or on a tube train, she said, I look across and I go, oh, yes. And I sort of feel the same. <laughs> Okay, so after you finish the run of As You Like It, what's next for you? I'm going to do a play down in Chichester, and I'm playing my old, my own age. It will be a relief to everybody. Uh, I'm playing as some some wily lawyer. It's a play. It's a political play. A new political play called The Inquiry, which reflects, I mean, the way we think politics is being done at Westminster at the moment, which is not very, not a very distinguished way is it, the player reflects that and I'm a, a rather undistinguished lawyer wheeling, wheeling and dealing to get his own way it's a very good part so it's a new play so, that's, I, so I'm looking forward to that very much so I, I think I have a month off and I start that how lucky am I and any other roles you'd like to do maybe King Lear <laughs> well funny enough because I you know there's a, there's a new regime here Daniel Evans and Tamara Harvey which is going I think it's going to be marvellous and I thought, well, shall I uh, go up and say, well, what I would like to play is Romeo, of course. And I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. Any of that. No, funny enough, the only part I want to play, I don't want to play King Lear, but I would like to be in King Lear and play the Duke of Gloucester. I think the Duke of Gloucester's a marvellous, marvellous part, I mean, because it gets blinded. But I've always wanted to play that part. I don't want to play anything. I think the um, King Lear would be way too exhausting. Uh, and, of course, Bran- King- Ken Branagh's about to... About to do it, isn't he, down in, down in London? So um, that'll be splendid. Maureen, how did you get the job of Celia in this production? Uh, Omar Elarian, who is our uh, esteemed director, was um, knew my work from before. And um, in particular, I had been in a production directed by Michael Boyd, who, of course, is um, a previous artistic director of the Royal Shakespeare Company, and um, he had just liked my work very much, which was delightful. And um, so he asked to meet me for this production. And um, I obviously passed muster uh, because um, I ended up being in it. So it was good. <laughs> What's it like being in a company of mature actors? It's fantastic. Um, please excuse my voice. I'm going to say this out loud in case people think I always sound like this. I've got a raging cold. Um I, it's amazing. I mean, apart from the fact that, of course, if you've been in the business for a certain length of time, you know more and more people in the business, so you know more and more members of cast when you join a company. So it's lovely to have old friends, you know, um, myself and Malcolm Sinclair, for example, we're both ex-presidents of equity. So that's we have a good old bond there through unionism. But um, it's also amazing because of the amount of skill that these people, that all the older people bring and all the decades of understanding and learning that we've done. We've got four younger people in the much younger people. Um, it wouldn't be difficult to be much younger than us, having said that. Um, younger people in the company. And they are amazing too. And they, we, we learn from them just as they are learning. We learn from them about their openness and their willingness to try new things and their just their absolute, you know, chucking themselves into that snake pit and just going for it. And it's been really marvellous. There's a real, really fantastic feeling of company in the company, which is a delight. Did you think you would play Celia? Well, um, funnily enough, um, I've been in As You Like It three times before. Twice back in the early days when I was the right age to play Rosalind, I played Rosalind for Stephen MacDonald, first of all at Dundee Rep and then at the Lyceum Theatre in Edinburgh. And then recently, I think it was about three years ago, uh, for Max Webster, I played um, Jaquies um, in, uh, uh, in at Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. Yeah. And of course, in, in this modern day, when we're increasingly hoping that... Um, you know, um, 
there are there are fewer parts for women. There's just no question that that's the truth. And certainly in Shakespeare, you know, for every one part he wrote for a woman, there's 14 parts for men. This is famous. But um, Jacques is absolutely one of those parts you can just make it a woman and you don't have to make any alterations to the text at all. Just well, apart from the odd he being she, but that's it. And actually it works really well as a kind of female eco-warrior, which is how I played her. So I've been in it three times before and... Um, it's lovely to get a chance to be in it again and play a different part. I'm loving playing Celia. It's great fun. Have there been many changes to the actual text, though, bearing in mind that this is for for an, a mature company of actors? Um, we didn't make any um, changes to the text which were to do with the maturity of the actors at all. Um, the, but, but he did, Omar, the director, did, do, did make changes to the, the text because of the way that he saw the play and the way and the story through lines that he saw in the play so he he put he juxtaposed different scenes he cut some scenes entirely um, and he put in some sort of more kind of physical things like there's a lovely soft shoe shuffle in at one point which is just for time passing so let's not just leave it let's have a soft shoe shuffle why don't we um which, uh, so things like that, but none of it was to do with the age of the actors. You talk about age of the actors, and uh, perhaps you had experience of this with your dealings with equity. Is there a lot of discrimination still in the profession these days? Yes, I think there is, and I think it's one of the last great frontiers um, for us. We are, we've got a long way to go in all of our inclusivity in, in terms of our um, racial um, inclusivity, in terms of um, the deaf and disabled community, LGBT+, plus, all of those, are. we've got a way to go. But we are making in slowly but surely. The age thing, the women thing is a, is, is a real problem again we are making some inroads but there is no question that as you get older as a woman there are fewer parts for women generally and then as you get older as a woman there are fewer and fewer and fewer parts so you end up you know doing you you play crones you know um so one of the things we're hoping for this production to do is to open people's ideas and minds to the idea that Maybe not all older women need to play crones and maybe not all older men need to be elder statesmen. Perhaps they've got, you know, there's life in the belly yet kind of thing. Um, and I think that's really borne out by this production because I think at its best what happens is you forget after you've initially been told that we, we know we're all older and blah, 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 which is very upfront at the beginning. But when you are then, once you start watching it, you stop thinking of Malcolm Sinclair and, and Geraldine James' age and you just watch two people falling in love and you watch a scene between two consummate actors being brilliant and you get carried along with that. And it's only until the very end you go, oh my goodness me, oh my goodness. And you, because you, you genuinely forget and that's a fabulous thing. Is that down to the actors? Is it down to Shakespeare's writing or is it a combination? <laughs> it's a combination. I mean, Shakespeare, you know, arguably the greatest playwright that ever lived in the history of the world in any language. You know, come on. Um, but, you know, and I know that you could argue but he's certainly up there, isn't he, in the top three. Um, so it's his words, those timeless stories that he tells, uh, coupled with consummate artistry and real... Uh, Malcolm and, and Geraldine both have this wonderful quality of openness and of genuine communication with each other you know, two actors who talk to each other on stage and don't you know, of course we've, you've got to play for the audience because we are in the RST which is a big thrust stage and so you've got to be sure that the people at the back, the back of the upper circle, um, you know right around at the back end of the stage can hear and see you, you've got to play to them too but but I'll keep throughout that feeling that this this couple, you know, for example, that's a good example of the, you know, actually are falling in love. They've fallen in love and then their love matures as the play goes on. So that when they finally get married, that's a spoiler alert for anyone who doesn't actually like it. And when they find, you know, you're like, oh, isn't that marvellous? You feel all happy and fuzzy. <laughs> as well as the theme of love, there, there are also things like uh, freedom and jealousy. Do you think that because you've got a mature company of actors who possibly experience those emotions themselves, they can bring more to those parts? Um, I'm not entirely sure whether that's true. 
I think it depends on the individual's experience of life. I mean, I dare say if you asked any of our four fabulous young people who are out with us, playing various different parts, like you know, the um, sort of kind of servant characters, lords and ladies type thing, if you ask them, I bet you they've all got some experience under their belt of jealousy, of of longing, of of losing love, of being chucked, <laughs> of longing for someone who was never to be theirs, whatever. Those universal themes. So it might have, I think really it might just have happened to us older ones a bit more often. <laughs> but you know, it doesn't you don't have to have been alive for very long to have those experiences, I don't think. So What's uh, what's in store for you after you finish the run of As You Like It? I don't know what's happening to me next, which I have to be very honest and say I'm really pleased about because it would be really nice to have a break. And now that I'm getting her, His Majesty's pension, I don't need to worry so much. So if I could have a wee break, I'm sending this out into the universe. If I could have a nice wee break before the next job comes in, that would be really nice. Um, because in in my business... If somebody offers you a job, unless it's something you really don't want to do, understandable, um, you just kind of have to take it because it's that kind of, you know, you're a freelancer. Um, that's what freelancers do. So I'm hoping that um, the gods smile on a maybe four weeks break, you know, nice wee rest, and then back in the saddle again, as they say. Any particular roles that you'd like to uh, be offered in the future? Uh, yes, I would very much like to play uh, Macbeth. I would really love to have a go at that. And I would really love to have a go at King Lear. Uh, that was suggested to me by, by somebody. And we're thinking that maybe we could... I can't talk about it because, you know, you these things are so nebulous and pie in the sky. But I'd love to have a go at either of those, particularly Macbeth, because I think it, when I had the idea in my head and I read the play, I went, oh, my goodness, it works so well if it's a woman for all kinds of reasons. And so I think that would be great. But I'd have to get my voice back first. <laughs> As You Like It runs in the Royal Shakespeare Theatre in Stratford until Saturday the 5th of August. You've been listening to a podcast from British Theatre Guide. For more information, please visit britishtheatreguide.info.